The hand-to-hand -hand combat is a major aspect of what makes Dragon Ball fights some of the best in fiction. Dragon Ball is a series about the journey of a martial artist called Son Goku, so unsurprisingly he is one of the most skilled fighters not only in his own series, but all of Shonen. It's becoming an increasing trend to hit on Goku's overall hand-to-hand -hand combat intelligence. Since Dragon Ball Super first came out back in 2015 I believe, people believe that he regressed as a fighter and is dumber than ever, but this is far from a truth, so I'm going to be going over why Goku who has always been a genius martial artist, is still a genius martial artist to his very day, and is constantly improving. To make you remember why Goku is still him. I won't be considering Goku's raw power, biology, speed, or techniques, since this is strictly to do with skill and intelligence. If Goku uses his traits in an intelligent way, then I do feel obliged to mention those feats in particular. So before we break down what makes Goku one of the greatest fighters in anime history, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe and like the video. To quickly establish, a 12 year old Goku wouldn't learn the fundamentals of martial arts until he met Master Roshi, who has hundreds of years worth of combat experience. The earliest example of Goku using these fundamentals on display was during the 21st Tenkaichi Budokai against Master Roshi, disguised as Jackie Chun. Goku fights out what is known as the orthodox stance, and for those of you who don't know, in martial arts, an orthodox stance is a traditional fighting position. The fighter stands with their weak hand and foot out in front to make themselves more streamlined to avoid being hit. This also allows them to generate more power in their dominant backhand, as well as throw kicks from the back. Now some of you who watch boxing or MMA might realise that Goku doesn't exactly have the typical technique that most fighters do. That's because Goku's fighting style is grounded more to a traditional Chinese martial arts used by Bruce Lee. It's a combination of Kung Fu and Wing Chun that teaches you to move fluidly rather than being rigid. Punches and kicks are thrown straight down the center line. While it's not the most effective martial art ever, it's more aligned with Goku's character for pretty obvious reasons too. Goku is based off Sun Wukong from a Chinese novel Journey to the West. Therefore, it would make sense for him to have a Chinese fighting style that Goku uses so effectively that he can land strikes on martial artists who have much longer reach than him. Another underrated skill Goku displayed during this arc was his creativity, which to be absolutely fair can be attributed to comedic effect. For example, he would use his tail and spin it around quickly to fly around like a helicopter, which is a pretty inventive feat. He also copied Master Roshi's speed mirage in order to trick him and to set up attacks during the heel battle, as well as create several new moves like the Mad Dog Fist and Monkey Fist in order to acrobatically outmaneuver Master Roshi. Now, the next time Goku changed his style was when he was trained in key control by Kami post chapter 180 in the Piccolo Jr. saga. With the introduction of key control, Goku could now fly, which forced him to adapt his orthodox stance to a more open and square stance. An open stance in martial arts is a positioning where the fighter stands with their body more squared and less angled. While it does make Goku more easy to hit on the ground, it was a necessary adjustment because characters now move up and down and also fire omnidirectional attacks, so he needed to block and evade a wider range. An open stance gives him a significant advantage in three dimensions to have more fluidity during flight. In A, you can't exactly generate power from the ground up like you would traditionally in martial arts, so he doesn't get an advantage from fighting in the orthodox stance anymore. Also, consider that the fights aren't just limited to small arenas anymore. Goku had to fly across massive terrains like dense forests, sandy deserts, cloudy skies. His open stance allows him to adapt to these harsh environments so that he doesn't slip, trip, or get stuck. Goku also has to combine key blasts with physical strikes, so an open stance makes it easier for him to switch between them to close the distance. From here to the end of the original Dragon Ball series, Goku didn't learn much other than how to hit pressure points, as shown when he KO'd this dude with just a karate chop to the neck. Moving on to Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z took Goku's skill to the next stage, where battles were now on an even larger scale with the introduction of other planets in the Saiyan Saga. It was revealed that Goku was an alien called Saiyan who had a greater fighting instinct and potential than humans. His new master, King Kai, taught Goku the Kaioken and a spirit bomb in order to face the same prince, Vegeta, and his companion, Nappa. Goku used psychological warfare in order to exploit their pride and arrogance to lure them into making mistakes, by purposely holding back his power level to trick Vegeta into underestimating Goku's power, which led him to take down Nappa. Vegeta, however, is a lot more powerful than Nappa, so Goku taunted and mocked Vegeta in order to provoke him into acting more recklessly and making mistakes. To hurt Vegeta, Goku had to multiply his power with the Kaioken technique, but couldn't maintain it long due to the strain he put on his body. Therefore, Goku used the Kaioken strategically, only activating it in crucial moments of a fight in order to to reserve his strength. When Vegeta transformed into his Ozaru form, Goku knew that Vegeta would be even more overconfident due to his massive power increase. Goku then temporarily blinded Vegeta using the solar flare, which allowed his friends to help him defeat Vegeta with the spirit bomb. 
In the next arc, Goku's combat skills were arguably not as crucial in his battle with Frieza on Namek, but still useful. Goku showcased his intelligence by using the Kamehameha to propel himself into the air and catch Frieza off guard. He catches Frieza's tail and spins him about, even biting it when being strangled, showing that he will resort to anything, even dirty tactics if he has to. But like I implied a little bit earlier, his fight against Frieza was ultimately won by using Super Saiyan to overpower him. Goku would go on to master the Super Saiyan to conserve his energy, only using what is necessary to avoid wasteful attacks. This allows him to maintain a consistent performance throughout the battle without exhausting himself prematurely. Goku would also learn new abilities during his time on Yardrat, which would prove useful in the following arcs against the androids and Cell. One of those abilities is the instant transmission, which Goku combines with the Kamehameha to surprise Cell at point blank range during the Cell games. Throughout the battle, Goku swaps hands with Cell in close quarters combat, showcasing an understanding of disciplines like karate and boxing. He uses a mix of traditional punches and strikes like jabs, hooks, uppercuts, as well as roundhouse kicks to keep Cell off balance. But what's more interesting about this is that he defaults back into a more traditional orthodox stance, showcasing that Goku can alternate between stances depending on if he's on the ground or flying in the air. Goku would begin the Buu arc off by fighting Yakon, demonstrating his experience and mental focus. They fight in complete darkness, which favours Yakon, who can see in the darkness. But ultimately, it makes no difference because Goku is highly trained in his physical senses. What I mean by this is instead of panicking in absence of sight, Goku taps into his heightened senses by focusing on the subtle shifts in the air currents to detect Yakon's movements. This technique is similar to martial art disciplines like Ikido, where you learn to sense energy and movement without solely relying on sight. As Yakon moves to strike, the disturbance in the air allows Goku to know exactly where he is. Goku also reveals that he does have other methods of seeing him, and so he turns Super Saiyan, illuminating the entire surrounding area. Yakon reveals that he can suck up Super Saiyan Goku's key in order to power himself up, so believes he's unbeatable in this scenario, which he technically should be. Goku smartly tests this by using more and more of his power, and gambles that Yakon will be overwhelmed by Goku's level of key and implode, which is exactly what happens, proving that Goku is a calculated risk taker who can think outside the box. Later, Vegeta gains emergent power from Bibidi. Goku holds back against him, turning it into a more skill-based fight. Unfortunately, he doesn't have an opportunity to showcase any other notable skills against Buu, because his opponent isn't exactly the smartest, so he doesn't need to be the smartest. This is when we move into Dragon Ball Super. Many people argue that Dragon Ball Super dumbs Goku down because of how comedic Goku is, but that's not exactly the fairest interpretation. Straight into the Battle of Gods arc, Goku is shown shadow boxing Cell in his imagination, showing that he had been keeping up with his training. Most notably, Goku gains Super Saiyan God in order to fight the God of Destruction Bearers, who has over a thousand years worth of experience. While this may seem like a more power related skill, Goku's use of God Key against Beerus taught him how to precisely control his power. Their power could have easily ripped apart Universe 7, but Goku during his fight learnt how to cancel out his destructive power. He could still hit with the same force as before, but now he could control the range of destruction that his attacks have. In a lead up to the Resurrection F arc, Goku is trained by Lord Beerus's attendant angel and teacher, Whis. During this arc, Goku demonstrates that he can use the instant transmission on an interdimensional scale as he senses Gohan's key back on Earth from Beerus' planet. Against Frieza, Goku becomes aware of his patterns and adjusts his techniques accordingly. For example, when Frieza's stamina starts to drop due to the strain of maintaining his golden form, Goku takes advantage by increasing the pressure with continuous rapid attacks, which forces Frieza to use even more energy. Ultimately, he does underestimate Frieza, allowing him to destroy the Earth in his base form, or his final form. However, luckily, Whis reverses time to give Goku another chance, from which he learns a valuable lesson. Next up is the Universe 6 tournament, in which Goku fights the skilled assassin from Universe 6, Hit. Hit can skip 0.1 seconds into the future. He also keeps his hands in his pockets to make it hard for his opponent to predict his next movement with the time skip. Goku figured out how to counter Hit's time skip by predicting his movements, which sounds counterintuitive. He somehow manages to do it, despite the multiple disadvantages that he has. Even when Hit skips even further into the future, Goku still manages to keep up with Hit. This battle basically shows Goku's adaptability and ability to learn to overcome time-related attacks in the Hit battle. Although one criticism is, and even Vegeta points this out, is if he knows exactly what Hit is doing or understands how his ability works, why would he explain back to Hit how his ability works and how he plans to counter him? So that is a little dumb, but other than that, it was a pretty good showing from Goku. Moving on to the next arc. Although Goku Black was technically a tough opponent, so tough that Goku needed fusion with the help of Zeno to win at the end of the day, 
I believe the next time Goku actually showed major improvement in his combat intelligence was when he faced off against Jiren during the Tournament of Power using his Ultra Instinct form, which is basically a form accessed through Goku's many years of experience in fighting instinctively. It was mainly Master Roshi and Whis's training that allowed him to access this. Although he does gain a massive power-up, it also makes Goku much more reactive and gives him the ability to autonomously avoid attacks without delay of having to consciously think about everything. This battle was a testament to his ability to fight on instinct alone to reach the peak of martial arts mastery. After the tournament of power ends, the anime was discontinued but the movies and the manga shows Goku's continuous journey of constant improvement in the martial arts. During the moral arc, Goku trains with Mirus, a galactic patrolsman and secretly an angel in disguise. Mirus helps Goku further refine his ultra instinct abilities. During the training, Goku focuses on learning how to react even faster, embodying the essence of martial arts where unnecessary movements are completely eliminated. Goku also works on maintaining his stamina and energy levels while fighting in ultra instinct, allowing him to sustain the form for much longer and fight more effectively without overexerting himself against the magician Moro. Next, during the Granola Survivor arc, Goku continues to improve with his godly powers. Goku uses classic martial arts moves, there's nothing new or noteworthy, and that's when we kind of reached the end of the manga. The same goes for that new movie, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. He was hardly even in that movie at all, actually I don't even think we even see him fight during that movie. So that brings us to the end, ultimately the lessons that he's learned are from his countless fights, all while maintaining the core principles of martial arts, showing that Goku's fighting skills go far beyond just raw power. From mastering ancient martial arts techniques to adapting to the heat of battle, he's proven time and time again that he is a true warrior at heart. Anyway, thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more Dragon Ball and anime content, and I'll see you later. Peace out.